This is your season of grace with your host, Patrick Henry Eden. Get ready for Grace Revolution. Mark's Gospel, Chapter 4. Reading from verse 35. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. The disciples didn't have any initiative or burden of going to the other side. The issue of going to the other side was entirely that of the Lord. That day when evening came. Which day? That day. The scripture has not said whether it was Monday or Tuesday, whether it was Sabbath or any other day. Just say that day. It means that day could be any day. That day is a blank check for one to write his day. That day when evening came, and we happen to be here in the evening, And so here we are on that day. He said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. You see, the word advance means go forward. Change location. Move ahead, progress. For many people, advance means changing from where you are now. Where can be physical, can be emotional, can be spiritual, can be financial. Every form of advance, I'm using the word now in a context. It could be called advancement or whatever, but when I use the word advance, I just want to take it and have the liberty of using it as a like within this context. Every issue of advance has to do with a change. Changing from one financial place, emotional place, social place, spiritual place, economic place, power place, influence place, anointing place to another. Advance is progress. Move forward. Increase. Change positively. Rise. Fly. Sometimes we just feel comfortable staying in one place. Even though we know we need something more, but we don't want to take the risk. We don't want to fight the fights. We don't want to dare things. But God knows what is on the other side. Jesus Christ knew that there was something on the other side, something of exploit, something of new, new, new space, new capacity, new provision, new opportunity. I'm speaking in the name of Jesus. That this evening, you will cross to the other side. Because the Lord wants us to cross. Your other side may be emotional. Changing from that emotional dark place to the place of freedom. 
the other side. Your other side may be changing from that little space where you are hemmed in all around, walled in, suffocated. Whatever you do is questioned. Whatever you say is held against you. The other place can just be crossing into your space. The scripture says in the psalm, you have brought us to a spacious place, abundant place. For somebody who has been hemmed in, tightened and cornered, because the Lord has said, let us go. I stand here as his ambassador, as his representative in this government. I say, you will cross to the other side. Say, I am ready to cross to the other side. Whatever it means, I am crossing. We see that it is very important. The willingness to cross. Sometimes all that you need for your life to turn around is following the Lord's instruction and discerning in what way is he asking you to cross over. There is always the other side when you have been on this side for too long. The side of depression, the side of rejection, the side of abuse, the side of misunderstanding. Somebody living in a neighborhood, in a compound that you are constantly fighting war. God has laid it in my heart to tell you, cross to the other side. Amen. Let us go over to the other side. Look at the next verse. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along. <laughs> they left the crowd behind. The crowd. I feel tempted to comment on the crowd. Jesus was wise. He didn't trust the crowd. The crowd does not have a friend. The crowd that used to shout, the same crowd that shouted, Hosanna. To the son of David, the one blessed, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Some guys in the same crowd were in another crowd that shouted again, Do away with him. Every kind of life lived on the popularity of the crowd is a life of foolishness without substance. Jesus left the crowd behind. Whatever it, it is, whatever is required for you to leave behind. You see, going to the other side all the time implies leaving something behind. Let's think of what just left behind, the crowd. The crowd can make you popular. The scripture says in John chapter 6, when Jesus had multiplied bread for them, the crowd wanted to seize him to make him a king. Everybody enjoys crowd. But wise people are careful with crowd. So there comes a time you leave crowd behind. That means you cannot get to the other side while holding on to the crowd. The crowd may be things that make you feel good at the moment that will not last. The crowd doesn't last. The crowd can sing for you in the morning. By night, everybody goes home. You are the one to live your life. On the day of wedding, people know what a crowd. Everyone that has ever wedded, traditionally or widely, has had some romance with the crowd. During traditional marriage, all sorts of uniform from places of work, including those who didn't wish you well, 
including those who have not given up, who don't still wish you well. They form the crowd. They dance and they spray you, according to Nigerian parlance, spray money on you. But it's the crowd. That's not marriage. You see, the marriage was very beautiful. That's not marriage. It's crowd. Sooner or later, the crowd is gone. And you are left, both of you. If you are hungry, you are hungry. If you are sick, you are sick. You have to manage yourself. So to cross to the other side, you have to name your crowd and leave your crowd. You have to name, tell somebody, name your crowd. Then leave your crowd. <laughs> it is important. Many people have been swallowed. Many people have not been able to cross to the other side because of attachment to the crowd. We want to keep it all the time. The ovation of the crowd. <laughs> the crowd. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along. I pray in the name of Jesus that the courage you need to leave the crowd behind in order to cross to the other side, that that courage is given to you in the name of Jesus. Can you stand up and lift up your right hand? Say, Father, by your grace, I accept the courage to break with the crowd and to cross, to advance in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As I'm speaking, you know, I don't have any idea what your own crowd is. Everybody's crowd is different there are young women who find it difficult getting married because of the crowd maybe belonging to a crowd of your, of some girls who have fantasy about the kind of husband they will marry my husband must first of all have a, a good car i cannot go and marry a man that i will suffer my husband must have built his own house. If he has not built his house, am I going to go start life in somebody's house? It's not true. And so a girl can be in a company of such crowd. And so one innocent guy has come to ask you, will you marry me? You look at the person and look at the crowd. If I marry this person, my crowd will shame me. He doesn't have a car yet. He doesn't have a house. He's not qualified to marry somebody in that crowd. Some people get married and spend the rest of their lives fighting with the husband because they are still living with the mind of the crowd. My friend now is in the U.S. He went to the U.S. to have his first baby. And here I am stuck with somebody. My first child, I couldn't go to the U.S. This second child said, I'm not... You are miserable, not happy because of the crowd. though others are not with you but you are still in the crowd the mindset you want to belong tell somebody name your crowd and leave your crowd you see it's very important young men you see the issue of competition is about crowd issue of competition to be like another person a lot of people who steal a lot of people who cheat a lot of people who do all sort of things there are men who are very unfaithful to their wives not because they like it the crowd just the crowd they belong to a, a, a college of guys who are irresponsible by default they can't just be responsible and so when you happen to be in that crowd you sit down in a company of men who are married but who now take other girls by the way research is showing that young girls take money from married people so married people sponsor young girls who are singles but their wives are likely suffering at home leaving the crowd behind they took him so take jesus but leave the crowd the disciples were wise they left the crowd jesus left the crowd but they they took Jesus. Because without taking Jesus, you cannot get to the other side. You will soon see it all. 
If you advance without Jesus, there will be shipwreck. <laughs> Don't tell me I have swimming jacket. <laughs> it doesn't work in the in the ocean of life. Oh. You need Jesus. The company of Jesus must advance. Therefore, the company of Jesus must live behind the crowd. A crowd that makes you do what you don't like to do. But you do it because you belong to a crowd. You cannot advance if you are not ambitious. And you cannot translate your, or yet translate your ambition into motion, promotion, without leaving behind the crowd. Tell me who are your friends. What are the ambitions of your friends? What is the hunger and the passion of those who call your friends? What do you guys spend time together talking about? Leave the crowd. It is never late. In the name of Jesus Christ, advance. Advance here would mean breaking from a mindset. A mindset, mentality of laziness. Guys, you sit down and think until they become PA to the governor, they will not leave their house. They don't look for ways of being relevant and making contribution. They just wait for an appointment that will fall from heaven. Or their brothers in India or Ethiopia who will send them visa. You need to cross to the other side. And you need to leave crowd. Family crowd. Environmental crowd. Political crowd. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. Just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. So, <laughs> other boats, we are all advancing. Tell somebody we are all advancing. Other boats are going home. So, if you are not going, know that other boats are going. Don't let them arrive there before you. The next verse. A furious squirrel came up. Can you go to N New King James Version? A great windstorm. That other squirrel is like too much grammar. Windstorm. You can relate with wind and storm. If you don't understand wind, you will understand storm. If you understand storm, you will understand wind. And a great windstorm arose. And the waves beat into the boat so that it was already feeling. Can you imagine that now? Now you understand why so many people, after all the fasting and prayer, they are not ready to advance. Because of what you may likely face on the way. The people of Israel, when they were faced with opportunity to advance, they were telling Moses, is it because there were no graves in Egypt that you bring us to die here? It is scary to advance. Prophecy will do a mighty work in your life of giving you opportunity, but you must be the one to advance. Prophecy does something, opens the door for you. That's what happens when prophecy comes. Opportunity will open. But it is not instantly a promotion. You have to turn it into a promotion. You have to face the envy that will come. Face the competition. Face the politics. Face the adversity. Everything that will come out of it, you have to face. And to do that, you have to leave the crowd behind. Leave whatever used to support you in the past that you don't need. The unnecessary distracting voices and all that. Every culture that will take you back. You, leave, you must leave something behind. As, as a married young man or a married woman, you leave your father's house, you leave the crowd of the father's house, all the support system and all that. You start a new life. You cannot wake up in the morning and, and wish, I wish my mommy were to be here. You, you, you face your life. And as a young man, you, stay, you, face, you are now a man. No daddy, you are the daddy. You face it. So when we are talking about crossover, we think it is cheap. Look at the storm now. Look at if you don't like, if you don't understand the wind, you understand the storm. So suddenly as you are advancing, sometimes midway, a storm arose. And you begin to say, for it, for it, a storm is storm. 
whether it's from the father's side or the mother's side, it is time to choose to cross over or to go back. Tell somebody, which one are you going back or are you going forward? But you, what are you saying? No, stand up and speak it. Let me hear you. Shout it. Let God hear you. And God said, as I have heard you say, so shall I do. Be seated in the name of Jesus. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. Suddenly, in one verse, there is catastrophe. In one verse, there is a problem. In just one verse, not three verses, one verse you see trouble, you see threat. You see issues, anxiety, trouble, all the excitement of I cross over, I cross over. People are beginning to say, see what happens. The next verse says, but he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. How do you, how can you imagine that? The one who told them, let's cross over, he's sleeping. He's the one who said, let's cross over. But he's sleeping. He takes for granted that since he's among you, in, you know what to do. <laughs> the one who, tell, who told you he's the right man for you to marry is sleeping. The one who told you he's the right woman to marry is sleeping. When the storm begins to come, so it doesn't look like a person that came from prophecy is sleeping. That means you deal with the storm. Tell somebody, deal with the storm. Those who advance successfully are those who are willing to deal with the storm. When God has given you blessing, blessing comes with shuku shuku. Every blessing has thorns. Just like every rose has thorns. That's why children cannot advance. Because a little thing, a child will run to mommy, 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 and hold on to mommy. But, but adults, they leave the crowd behind. Mommy can be the crowd. Daddy can be the crowd. Your siblings can be the crowd. School friends used to do school runs together. They can be the crowd. You pull them, push them aside. David had to kill Goliath to enjoy prominence. So when you see your Goliath, don't shout, kill it. Am I talking to somebody? You see, David was anointed king. But in order to reign, he had to do the first thing. People don't just reign. You don't reign until you kill Goliath. Because you, you are crossing over, but to get to that place where everything will be beautiful, a storm will come. A gale, a furious squall, or whatever is called, or a combination of storm and wind, they come. It's not time to talk nonsense. Face it. You face it. Pastor had prayed his own in church. You pray your own at home. Don't wake up and begin to look for phone number to call. Deal, it now. Deal with it now. Am I talking to somebody? Glory to God. But he was in the stand asleep on a pillow. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? If you don't, if you don't wake him up, perish now. What, were you, what have you been doing all this while? If you, couldn't, if you couldn't calm the storm, wake him up to calm the storm. Yeah, if you couldn't calm it, then wake him up. The good thing is that he's with you. Tell somebody he's with me. That's why don't advance until you have him. He is the will. At every stage, you need Jesus. To begin, you need Jesus. He says, I am the Alpha. At the end, you need Jesus. He says, says, I am the Omega. Am I talking to somebody? In between, you need Jesus. He says, I am the Shepherd. A Shepherd is the one who walks with the sheep in the process. Alpha means you begin with him. Omega means you end with him. Shepherd means you walk with him. At every stage you need him. So if you if you try to do gra gra and just try to cross without him, when you enter storm, and your eye go clear. So they call and say, "Rise!" I like this one. If you cannot calm the storm yourself, wake him up. But sometimes he has to sleep, take his rest, and see how you manage it. Glory to God. Teacher, don't you care that we are perishing? Go to the next verse. Then he arose and rebuked the wind. This is a beautiful thing. And he, he said to the sea, Peace, be still. Glory. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. This is a good thing. When you have him, there is an assurance. If you have him, I can assure you. Can I tell you something? 
if you have him right now with you and in you, I can assure you, you will advance. How am I so sure? Because in the middle of storm, you have solution. So every storm in between, every wind and storm or combination of it, whether it is a witchcraft storm, whatever, just lift up your two hands and say, it is too late for you to stop me. But the point is this, if you don't have Jesus, you will crash you. And if you have Jesus, I have prophecy for you. I'm going to stand in agreement with you that no matter that storm, it will come down. Yeah. How do I know? Jesus comes the storm. So you will advance. As a child of God, no, you will advance. Oh. You will. If God says, come, let's go to the other side. You will get there. Yeah. I say you will get there. Yeah. Everywhere God has put into your heart, everywhere God has laid in your hand, every the other side that god has put on your table you will get there in the name of jesus <laughs> jesus is your passport and if you have not made up your relationship with jesus maybe you backslided or you've never completely surrendered to him surrender leave the crowd oh, the crowd that is still keeping you in impurity you cannot go while holding on to the crowd no speak to him oh. lord thank you i have you I have the passport to advance. I have the, the blessing to advance. I have the permission to advance. I have the wherewithal to advance. I have the resources to advance because I have you. Lord, I thank you because you have given yourself to me in relationship. Lord Jesus, I thank you because you died on the cross for me. The scripture says suddenly there was a windstorm, a furious windstorm. And Jesus was disappointed that they didn't speak. Now we know we can use the name of Jesus and flock the windstorm. Am I talking to somebody? Now, if Jesus is in your boat, then use Jesus to flock windstorm. Stop your right and say, In the name of Jesus, every windstorm rising against my advancing, I flock you in the name of Jesus. Be quiet in the name of Jesus. This program is sponsored by the Covenant Friends and Partners of Grace Family Global Outreach. You can be part of this grace revolution by becoming a Covenant Partner today. Allow God to use you. Our account details are as follows. Bank. Zenith Bank. Account name, Grace Family Global Outreach. Account number, 101 42 9763. For inquiries, please call 081 804 33225 or 090 738 38742. To all our covenant partners and friends, we we'll say thank you. Like the widow of Zarephath, your oil will never run dry. To order for the books, messages, and other resource materials, please call or send an SMS to 080-660-46346 or 081-804-33225. Videos are also available on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Grace Family Outreach. To stay connected, like us on Facebook at Grace Family Outreach or visit our website at www.gracecommission.org.